Hello and welcome back to This Week in Biotech by Biotech Blueprint. Today I'm covering biotech and pharma news from October 17th to October 23rd, uh, and it is edition number 75. So a few stories I want to cover today. First one is that independent cost watchdog ICER says net launch prices for new US drugs jumped by about 51% across recent approvals. I think they looked at data from 2022 to 2024, and this is definitely outpacing inflation and GDP. The steepest climbers were in gene and cell therapies, rare diseases, and oncology. ISA estimates that more value-based pricing could have saved well over a billion dollars in the first year for a couple dozen launches. So the bottom line is that pricing pressure is building, and I think we can expect definitely louder pushback from payers and policymakers as well. Next is an interesting story that was just published this past week in, in Nature. And it's uh, mRNA shots um, supposedly may boost cancer immunotherapy. So this was a large analysis from teams at the University of Florida and the University of Texas uh, at MD Anderson. And they found that people with advanced lung cancer and melanoma lived much longer if they received an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine near the start of checkpoint therapy. So they said within 100 days. And so basically this extended their lives to uh, 37 months versus around 21 months if they were, did not receive the vaccine. And again, this was in the lung cancer and there was a strong trend in melanoma. And so after finding this, they went into mice and the mouse work suggests that the vaccine sort of wakes up the immune system so the cancer drug works better. Uh, this was not a randomized trial and a prospective trial is planned, but it's a sort of a signal that is interesting. Next is a first randomized win for intravenous phage therapy in serious staph infection. So a company called Armada tested is bacteriophage cocktail APSA02 plus antibiotics versus antibiotics alone in complicated bloodstream infections caused by Staphylococcus aureus. So basically in sort of very complicated sepsis cases. And what they found, so bacteriophage actually is a virus that kills bacteria. And they found that more patients were clinically better by day 12 if they got the antibiotics and this bacteriophage cocktail and none relapsed after they're done with the therapy. And actually about one quarter relapsed uh, when they just received the antibiotics alone. Side effects look manageable and they're planning a pivotal study for next year. Exelixis reported that its pill Zamzalitinib plus Roche's immunotherapy Atezolizumab or its brand name Decentric help people with previously treated metastatic colorectal cancer live longer than those on the current standard of care. And median survival difference was about one and a half months, which really sounds like very little, but it ends up being about 20% reduction in the risk of death compared to the standard of care. And Exelixis is planning to file in the United States this year. Roche's Decentric had another win this week. Uh, it scored in circulating tumor DNA guided adjuvant trial after bladder cancer surgery. So patients were watched with Signatera. It's uh, a test, blood test by Natera. Uh, those who turned CT or circulating tumor DNA positive, uh, which basically is an evidence for lingering cancer DNA, they're randomized to Tocentric or placebo. In the CT DNA positive group, Tocentric cut the risk of death by about 41% and cut recurrence or death by 36% versus placebo with a safety profile in line with prior use. Uh, this is the first global phase three readout showing that Testing first and then treating can both improve outcomes and spare low-risk patients from unnecessary therapy. Roche plans to discuss uh, this soon with regulators. Idea's Durbuster tip given before local eye treatment shrank tumors in most patients with uveal or eye melanoma. Over half of those that initially were headed for eye removal ended up keeping the eye and many candidates for radiation had modeling that predicted lower dose to sensitive eye structures and a lower risk of severe vision loss. Side effects were generally manageable and phase three study is underway. 
So this basically is an oral medicine that helps preserve the eye and vision before local therapy in eye cancer. And lastly, I just want to discuss uh, the setback that Moderna faced with their cytomegalovirus mRNA vaccine. Uh, they were testing CMV vaccine for preventing primary infection in a women of childbearing age with the goal to basically prevent uh, congenital CMV in, in their children. And that is actually the leading viral cause of uh, birth defects in most of the world. Uh, about one in 200 children are born with congenital CMV. And so this was, you know, there's an unmet need for this vaccine for sure. It's just that latent viruses like CMV are so tricky to make vaccines against. And but basically, unfortunately, they were not successful. Their uh, success rate uh, was about 6 to 23 percent, which was well below their goals. Uh, and so I actually this past week also published a podcast with Batek Capital Compass where we discuss mRNA vaccines, mostly done by Moderna or uh, in the pipeline of Moderna uh, for latent viruses, including CMV and for oncology. And we sort of thought that this CMV vaccine is going to be a little bit of a platform test for Moderna. And even though they had this disappointment, uh, I think that we still are somewhat optimistic uh, about the platform, and that's for several reasons. But the main important one is that the oncology pipeline continues to produce signals uh, like their mRNA-4157 or V940 vaccine that with Keytruda cut melanoma death by almost 50% in phase 2B and is now in phase 3. And secondly, I also think that this is while disappointing, it's a program-specific miss and not a platform safety failure. And I think that um, this platform obviously still has the ability to encode several antigens and drive T-cell responses. And that remains central to any future latent and oncology strategies that the company has. That's it for this week. Uh, I hope you had a fantastic week and have a great weekend ahead. And I'll see you back here next week.